You're so money and you don't even know it. <laughs> you're money, baby. <laughs> so baby, money, you're baby. so money. <laughs> I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And this is Baby's First Watch List. Back with a pick from our special guest, Uncle Robbie. Woo-hoo. Robbie is from the Loud About Nothing podcast, which is my favorite podcast. Ooh. And it also is like one of the few things I listen to that's not true crime or politics. So it's nice to get a listen every now and then. It is for sure neither of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and also since uh, Robbie's last appearance, we've gone viral. We yeah. have Hopefully. Oh, yeah. exploded in viewer and Hopefully. listenership. Hopefully. We got uh, some love. So, yeah. So if you're new, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie, welcome back. fun fact, is also a very small percentage owner of our dog who he is very annoyed by. Yes. <laughs> and reasonably <laughs> and reasonably so. A little annoying. I love she's the, the baby. She's Baby's first watch list. The namesake of the baby. That was why. April? Not why, but part of why you come down to see the fam. Heck yeah. April is currently standing underneath him, just staring, staring at him. <laughs> um, so we are obviously so happy to have Robbie back, um, pretending like he wasn't we didn't just record the other episode like five minutes ago. <laughs> for now we're back months later. <laughs> for 1996's Swingers. <laughs> Robbie, why did you choose Swingers? Uh, why did I choose Swingers? Because High School Musical 2 wasn't available. <laughs> no, True. I'm just kidding. We actually like literally <laughs> were saving High School Musical for uh, one of my close friends' husbands who loves that. Well, High School Musical 2. Oh, oh wow. High School Musical 2, yeah. I love that. Uh, No, it's... I was trying to think of what my favorite movie is, and I don't really think I have one, but I could watch Swingers every day. And there's not that many movies that I feel like I could watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Swingers is one of them. So I was like, oh, I would love to rewatch Swingers, even though I just seen it within a year. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen it once a year since I watched it the first time. It's How- also it's also so short that it's not like a, a project minutes. to watch. Very short, very applicable to my life in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, old were you when you first saw Swingers? Uh I probably watched it for the first time 2018, 2017. Oh, okay. So like, it wasn't like one of those like high school movies. No, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah. So you first saw it and you were like, wait, is this my life? It was like after my first heartbreak for sure. Yeah. It's a great breakup movie. Yeah, it really Maybe the is. best breakup movie of all time. I also just love the flow of the, how much they say the word baby. Mm-hmm. It's like a sketch comedy in a way. Like there's a lot of like distinct funny scenes there that are. are just very fun to rewatch. Um, so maybe it's my favorite movie. I don't know. Wow. If I were to choose one, I don't. I love the Toy Stories. We were like, I, yeah. I want a table. Toy Story three. Swinger, I you will definitely be there for Toy yeah. Story three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swingers is, I think, a cooler choice to be your favorite movie. Hundred percent. Definitely. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> Toy Story, not cool. I was gonna Corny. say. Corny. Like, listen, I mean, also, everybody loves it. But yeah, Swingers well, honestly, a little browy and a, listen, maybe a little like cliche i Less guess for what loud. i'm trying to do the overarching theme to both movies is you've got a friend in me yeah <laughs> for <laughs> so. sure i think that swingers actually it was a lot different than i expected because i thought it was going to be i was saying like a night at the roxbury like stupid like jokey like over the top and it's not it's really a comedy drama it's, it's reminded me of an a24 movie very indie yeah 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 it's very grounded which i'm sure yeah, like a24 draws from this type of movie rather than the other way around but yes, i've obviously yes, watched yes, more yes. a24 movies recently of course and i really it feels like it's a passion project for all all the people involved and i really like that i like when everyone's in and it feels like everyone's in it's almost swingers. like yeah. what what la la land was trying to be but like more realistic yeah you know yeah yeah well it was also they were trying to make it yeah they were not on they were not on and they were like i guess writing a little bit about their realities and they were like yeah we got to make something good because like i like the idea that making an indie movie can make you famous like that's kind of what it was like the dream was you had to make your own stuff and like very like we're gonna put it all into this like it was the only thing they had in a lot of ways yes yeah uh and like this is how we're gonna get on is doing this thing together yeah so i definitely like i don't feel like that happens as much anymore like mm-hmm. a24 is not no what it like, used to be they're people not pure, making they're movies not pure indie. No, yeah no, no, no. trying to like i'm trying to break through or it's like very much they're getting celebrities or like i guess maybe you'll have a it's writer now. that yeah very yeah. much so yeah. um it's hard it's hard to bust onto the scene by just like shooting your own thing yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And so Swingers is a comedy drama written by Jon Favreau and directed by Doug Lyman. And so Doug Lyman is, uh, uh, he's also known for the cult classic Go from the 90s. Oh, really? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, which I have never seen, but everywhere it's like best 90s movies go. And I'm like, okay, um, I need to watch it now, especially yeah. because on the cover, it's like from the director of Swingers. So <laughs> clearly they're trying to make that connection. But really, he's known for some of his actiony stuff. He was the director of all the Bourne movies, um, of the movie Edge of Tomorrow, which is a great movie with a terrible title. Yes. Um, Favreau, John Favreau, who also stars in this film, is a very prominent director and uh, actor as well. Really, he has made movies like Elf, Chef. Iron Man and the live action Lion King. He also is the creator of The Mandalorian. Also starring Vince Vaughn in what is considered his breakout role. Honestly, everybody's breakout role. Um, yes. Sue? What's his name? Again? I don't know about Sue, but <laughs> Ron Livingston. Ron Livingston. Um, no, that's not Sue. Uh, Ron Livingston. Oh, no, their Ron other Livingston's. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And Heather Graham, plus the guy from Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. <laughs> yes. Um, Swingers. He was already a star. Yeah, obviously. Swingers had a lot of um, kind of people, crew members that don't have Wikipedia pages. So that makes this easy because I can't name a lot of them because I don't know what they did. Um, but it was edited by Stephen Mirion. Mm, I don't know if I said that right. Who won an Oscar for editing the movie Traffic four years after Swingers, which is a very different movie. Yes, quite. And he works a lot with um, Soderbergh, okay. who did Traffic, and he does like all his movies, all of George Clooney's movies, like hmm. directed movies. They probably and, met on Oceans. Uh, because yeah, he worked on <laughs> all that, and yeah. then he um he works with Inner too as well. He okay. did Birdman and oh, wow. edited a lot oh. of stuff. Yeah, wasn't much editing going on in Birdman. No, no. he also <laughs> did uh, he did Beautiful. Remember that movie? Yeah, I didn't like that one very much. Um, so actually, I guess Birdman is all editing now that I think about uh, it. Yeah, it's gotta be, right. <laughs> um, Favreau wrote Swingers in two weeks. He did it on a like screenwriting computer program. He just kept using baby and money over and oh, over. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Baby's <laughs> first watch list. This has gotta yes. be the movie with the word baby in it the most. Has to be. Gotta be. That you right? <laughs> Um, and it was actually only filmed in 18 days. I think they did 12 pages of the script a day. Did wow. you say the budget yet? Uh, yeah, oh, no, I'll get to that. Um, they also used a lot of short ends of uh, the films. So they could only record like 60 seconds at a time <laughs> for parts I saw on Wikipedia, which is oh, kind of wow. crazy. So like some of the cuts you'll see are a little bit quicker. Um, it was released in October 1996 and it was a critical and commercial success. They were considering actually releasing it for the awards, like the the circuits for the uh, like Sundance, all that kind of stuff. They ended up not doing that because they were like, oh, maybe it's like more of a funny, like it's not really prestige. Well, this was like Miramax. So obviously that's yikes. Harvey Weinstein who yikes. But like they were in this time period where with Soderbergh did Sex, Lies and Videotape, right? Yes. That was like the first really, really big like indie movie that came from Sundance and did the whole thing. And um, so that was Miramax. Reservoir Dogs, I think, was Miramax as well. Okay. Or Pulp Fiction, one of them or both. Okay. And they like sort of – Miramax was like storming the indie gates at this point. Yeah. And this was just another one of those movies that I don't think they were – I think they were a well, year or two away because Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love – Shakespeare in Love was right after it, 98. Um, yeah. So they were like on the precipice of starting the challenge for awards, but this must have been like one of the last where they mm -hmm. held off. Totally. How about that for that like nerdy knowledge right there? I know. I'm trying to think. Uh, Goodwill Hunting was that around this time? It was it around was. this time. Yeah. He was gonna buy that too. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it's interesting. I do like the whole. Goodwill I mean, Hunting yeah, was '97. He sucks. But '97. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I like the and idea of like you're gonna make something, submit it to a festival, and if it goes through, you might become a star. And yeah, someone's yeah. gonna see it. <laughs> Someone who sucks, but <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that was kind of the vibe, I guess, of the industry. I mean, the industry was not great, but yeah, movie's good. Movie is good, and it actually made four point six million dollars on a budget of only two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's so cool. That's insane. It's amazing. It also shows you don't need all the bells and whistles if you can just ground 100%. something. 
and make it real and make it funny. It's very real and very funny. They yes. were money and they didn't even know it. They, they were, were so money, money baby. <laughs> it's just also like just talking funny. It's <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah. Like there's we for, we try to overcomplicate a lot of things. I feel like I agree. And it currently has an 88 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It is seen as like a cult classic and and it's clearly an influential film that launched a lot of different careers. Um, but no, Robbie, I totally agree with you. Did Tom tell you I have like a whole screenplay idea for you and Tom to write? Oh, really? That's actually watching Swingers. I was like, it's kind of a vibe. Yeah. There yeah. is that dream of like, you d- it, You don't need a lot you never to make something him? good. I might have. I think you mentioned I, we, we something. We talked briefly about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I swear, I feel like there's something there. Yeah. Between like you guys knowing each other so long, doing a whole a walk and just talking about different life philosophies, dating lives, things like that. I just feel like something's there that could work. And so watching Swingers kind of confirmed that to me. Like, yeah, I think like working with your friends on stuff could be a good thing. It's the best. Yeah. And having like an indie little vibe of like, and make it fun. You like have fun. Yeah, Yeah, totally. It looks so fun. The movie is fun. Yeah. They it go does, to it looks like they're it's having just, fun. They yeah. are having fun. Messing with each other, playing video games. Yeah. Or it's like all just nonsense. Yeah, with yeah. the guys that Sue pulled a gun on earlier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> so, Tom, that's literally all I have for like the pre-stuff. Go ahead and give us our plot summary of I have a pretty short, pretty short plot summary. Yeah, we're just... It's, it's a lot of like jokes. It's, it's, it's a lot right. of like There's scenes. Not comedic yeah. scenes of kind of tied together. All right. Mike Peters, played by John Favreau, is a struggling comedian who left New York to find success in Los Angeles. He's also not funny at all. Well, no. I, th- I love that. that <laughs> he's a comedian, <laughs> and he doesn't not tell funny. a single joke Incredible. the entire movie. Like, um, <laughs> and he's Incredible. so genius. Relatable. He's still upset over his uh, girlfriend of six years, Michelle, breaking up with him six months prior. To help Mike, his womanizing friend Trent, played by Vince Vaughn, and some other aspiring actor friends try to get him back into the social scene. Mike tells his friend Rob about how he misses Michelle, and Rob explains that somehow women know not to call their exes until the guy has completely moved on from them. To help, <laughs> to help Mike recover, Trent coaxes him into an impromptu trip to Vegas, baby. Vegas. Trent succeeds in picking up two waitresses, but Mike spoils the mood talking to his date about Michelle. <laughs> Back in Los Angeles, Mike, Rob, and other friends golf, play video games, and go out, all trying to make it in the entertainment industry. Meanwhile, April's like begging <laughs> to Please. climb up. Please. <laughs> Uh, then they go to bars, a party, and an after hour spot where Mike meets a woman named Nikki and gets her phone number. His friends insist he wait two days minimum before calling her. Back in his apartment, however, he leaves a series of increasingly anxious and desperate messages on Nikki's answering machine in the middle of the night <laughs> until she picks up and orders him never to call her again. <laughs> Missing Michelle more than ever, he contemplates moving back to New York until Rob comes over and consoles him. Out again for a swing night at the Derby, Mike spots a woman <laughs> named Lorraine, played by Heather Graham. He summons all his courage to approach her and they connect over recent breakups, moving to L.A. and dancing. The following morning, Mike gets a call from Michelle and finds that he no longer misses her. When Lorraine calls him on the other line, Mike cuts off his call with Michelle mid-sentence, saying she loves him to further things with Lorraine. Like him, she tells him she disregarded friend's advice to wait days before calling. And then there's just a final scene in the diner. With, One of my favorite scenes. With Mike and Trent, where Trent is like making eyes at this lady from down the, you know, across the room. <laughs> And he's like making his stupid little faces and she's making them back. And then all of a sudden she gets up and she's, she has a baby and she's been, she's been making faces at the baby and he thinks it was him. I found that scene to be like the smartest scene in the entire movie because Vince Vaughn's character Trent clearly has the like same sort of capacity of a baby. And he says the word baby over and over. over. It's his favorite word. And (laughs) turns out. He's the baby. The 100%. whole time. Oh, like, that is so funny. Yeah. I never so put that. He, he is the baby. Oh, he's the baby. He so totally, funny baby. like, this whole time is like, oh my gosh, she's flirting with me. No, she's <laughs> doing this with a baby. And he's like, yes, that's working for me. He's the baby. Also, what's great about that is that's Lyman and Favreau saying, like, we know with him. Like, exactly. yeah, yeah, He's yeah. not exactly. supposed to be the, the, the influencer. Cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, so good. I think he's cool as hell. <laughs> Vince Vaughn in Swingers is to me the most charming person that has ever existed on tape. 
And when I tell you, like, if that man ever approached me in my life, I would be disgusted. <laughs> this is why I think it's bro <laughs> Yeah. Because I, yeah. I think that Vince Vaughn is cool. Well, I truly... I can't watch the movie with, uh, like, anyone and not be like, how cool is Vince Vaughn? It's so funny you say that because earlier at the time, I'm like, what's great about Swingers is, like, when you're 18 and you're an 18-year-old guy, you're like, oh, Vince Vaughn's so cool. And then you watch it when you're 30 and you're like, wow, he's so lame. No, Apparently no, no. not. <laughs> so cool. He's so money, baby. No. <laughs> He doesn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, he knows it. He, he absolutely. He is uh, earnest. Yeah, not er- he's a good friend. He's really caring. He does have a, he does um, have multiple two or three so? moments. I do. Yeah. Why does he care about Mike? Mike, su- Mike to me is like intolerable. Why? I think Mike is like I think literally I just, like- the worst genre of person, which is a male who caused did something bad, right, to cause a breakup, right, and then is all sad about it. And it's like, bro, you did this. Your own selfish interests led you to this place. And now you are making it everyone else's problem around you. And they're annoying to be around. It's like, what do you want? Sympathy. You're a got untalented man who broke up with the love of your life to pursue a vain dream. Right. Why am I supposed to? And then you, then you expect sympathy all the time. And it's like, no, you are the worst type of person. I think it's kind of interesting, like... There is this sort of uh, weird juxtaposition between like how guys are supposed to be like they go out with their friends and they pick up these girls and blah, blah, blah. And during breakups, it also is this thing where like guys are the ones that are so broken up about it. Like they're just like, oh, my God, I'm never going to be OK again. And I like that both of those things are in the movie at the same time. Like he's very whiny and sad and depressed about his breakup but then he's still going out there with trent yeah <laughs> just talking up waitresses in vegas Who'd... it's this interesting kind of like how can you be both at one time like you hate yourself but at the same time you have to be money baby yeah <laughs> well he just is money he's just trying to i he guess just is he's money, money baby <laughs> you're just money, he's just baby he's just letting his buddy know it's trent also Maybe this is a hot take. I don't think Trent's that creepy, because Trent. I don't. Gets, I actually he's don't just find a, him that creepy. A good-looking dude, and that like he kind of gets hit on. He's even like nervous in one of the scenes. He's like, "Is she looking at me? Is she looking at me? I think she's looking at me. Like I have a cr-. like." He's nervous to approach. I don't think he really approaches. He does have a monologue about how women, <laughs> you're a bear, and yeah, women yeah, are right, right. helpless yeah, <laughs> animals, yeah, yeah. which is him, I guess, trying to hype up his friend. But yeah. he's never really exhibiting that behavior. I mean, he's an ass. He gets on the table, right? But he just thinks. He's very good looking. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> Mike, Vince Mike, Vaughn. he's grown up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't find Trent creepy. No, I find no, no. him to be a jerk. Obnoxious. Yeah, yeah, obnoxious yeah, yeah. Well, when he stands on the thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, he ugh, just gets a lot of attention. Getter. Yeah, exactly. he always is getting attention, which is why he thinks the mom. Like, Sue? I think Sue's creepy. <laughs> Sue? Sue's creepy. <laughs> Sue's wild. Sue's definitely creepy. <laughs> Sue's wild. Sue is their. Sue's a red flag. Sue is one of their friends. Uh, I don't think I mentioned him in the plot summary. Uh, and he. He is just like he pulls a gun on somebody like in a parking lot like yeah for no reason yeah he's wild <laughs> Sue's wild One Sue of- like is well he's like trying to be Trent like he has like a similar hairstyle he and he's got in that a similar complex way. of the boy called Sue right like the Johnny yeah Cash yeah, song. yeah it's like yeah. I guess got- to the Johnny Cash uh-huh. song yeah and he's like he, the whole movie he's like standing behind Trent when they're like in group settings and he's like kind of like echoing what he's saying like he like mm-hmm. obviously looks up to Trent mm-hmm. which is like hilarious yeah. <laughs> Trent doesn't seem to care about Sue as much as no, he cares about Mike. No, not. definitely not. Yeah. Especially because you could see that when Sue like says to Mike, like whatever, he, he said like something about his like, you know, the girlfriend or whatever. He said said something that I forget what he actually said, but it was something that was like super mean. And Trent like like pushed him and was like, dude, don't like what are you doing? Like that's messed up. Mm-hmm. Like protecting Mike. Right. I also I I really I think that that's every friend group that like at some point, there's someone in that friend group that you're just like, oh, Sue. Yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> we asked Sue's tagging along. Yeah, I know he pulled the gun on the guys last uh, time, but we like he's got to come. Now we're going to hang out with them and play uh, Sega Genesis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I do think they're all great. Also, like, archetypes of the people who do move to L.A. and are pursuing entertainment, which is a vain. It's like it should be made fun of, and they all are getting made fun of. But more times than not, like the good looking head of the the group is not super charismatic, not the best storyteller, not like Trent is like the best 
version of, of that archetype, mm-hmm. which I do like. And it's like if you're going to have to deal with somebody who's like that, which they're everybody in L.A. or everybody. Also, I do think a lot of people that are moving to L.A. to be actors just want to be Trent. So let's right. just be real about it. Right. And like he is the best version of that. One of my favorite scenes is when he tells the story of the audition. Oh yeah, and he tells it. He's got the people because he just has people eating out of the palm of his hand, which you yeah. do love if you're sitting that was there listening the waitresses, to. Right? Yeah, in the uh, in the trailer. the trailer. Yeah. Also, he's so like patient with Mikey. A lot of guys in that situation are getting mad. You know what I mean? Like it's Mikey's first kind of. <laughs> Robbie, you're such a Trent. Star. I love Trent, I but I it's just funny. This isn't how I saw this going. Me yeah, either. when he when he tells the so- the story and it, like it, the punchline is that he's auditioning for a 14 year old's part, right? Or a 13 year old's part, right? So he's clearly like they're eating out of the palm of his hand. He clearly knows that it's a joke. And he's not the comedian either. Right. You have Mikey right. next right. to him who is the comedian. Allegedly. But more times than not, it is like, I think he just is such a good version. Or he plays that archetype well. And he is like, I guess, the best of all of that. Because a lot of times not that guy's angry. That guy's not kind of a dud. Like the good looking whatever guy in that mm-hmm. group. When Trent is just, I mean, I love it. I love Vince Vaughn and Swingers. Well, what's genius is that Trent is also an out of work actor. Yeah, like he could have all these people eating out of the palm of his hand. He can control a room. He can do all this. He was probably a big fish in a little pond at whatever high school he went to. Was the coolest guy. Got all the big parts, and then he left to go to L.A. No, dry it up. But he keeps it. He keeps <laughs> the mentality, baby. Yeah. He I still love acts. He, I love it has they, a, you, if you want to have success, you need to just keep that mindset. And you're I right that like. it that doesn't drop. No. He ha- that's the whole movie. For yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not like there's some moment where he has like, like this oh, realization. I'm really no. actually so that like no. He has no, no depth at no. all. Trent. Literally <laughs> the end of the movie is him being referred to as a baby. Right. 100%. <laughs> he just yeah. is that in the entire time. Well, okay. So you love Trent. So this works well with my question here. As a uh, an adult man that is in the dating world in a big city, is there any good dating advice in this movie that you actually were like, yeah, I will. I either use that or will use that. Um, do you wait two days before calling? No, no, nobody. I don't think with texting is like everything is so immediate. Also in today, I feel like we have so such little attention spans that like yeah. two days is so long. <laughs> um, I think the one thing that Trent does, he's like, be chill. Like, don't mm. like. I t- like I need to remind myself. I think I'm more of a Mikey, and I need to l- be more like a Trent. Because <laughs> like I am not that chill, and like Trent, Mikey is not chill. He is like v- pretty neurotic, and you, like the girls like Trent because he's not. Well, he's so money, baby. You don't even know. He's just like, be chill. Like chill out. That's kind of I guess. But I, but I will say that only Mike ends up with like a meaningful connection, connection. with somebody in this movie. True, but it's also blind luck. Because it's a girl Very who's in like so. the exact same situation as him, who happens to look like Heather Graham. Yeah, but he also. <laughs> I mean, that is yeah. But he also could have gone back to Michelle. He could have. Yes. No, because she wouldn't have called until he was fully over her. Oh, that's. Oh, right. If you go with that, <laughs> yes. I, well, it's yeah, funny. That's true. That's why I added we that in the plot summary. Yeah, we we just they, they tell you the movie in pretty much the first line, which we just did the Shining also, which. A first couple months scene. ago before we got really famous. Yeah. First scene also, they just kind of tell you what's going to happen. That's yeah. true. With both of these movies. Yeah. Um, that may be the first comparison between Shining and the Shining Swingers, Swingers ever. Shows the excellent writing yeah. with both <laughs> of these movies. Yes. But no, I mean, I don't know if Trent ever finds meaningful love. Not in the But it's movie, good to remind, but... it's good to have that voice, especially if you're somebody who is gets like all sad or neurotic, makes things other people's problems. Mm. I guess Trent's not really hurting anyone. No, I no. Think well, so. I think I think the point is kind of like certain things work better for certain people. So like Mike obviously needed time to get through whatever he was going through, and did he handle it the best? No, he's annoying. Yeah, he's extremely annoying. But like in the end, it's not Trent's advice that helps him move on. Like Trent, no. Trent helped in some ways. He helped by trying to get his mind off of stuff and you know whatever, like helping him pass the days and all that. But like. He's, I mean, Trent's the reason why Mike's at the party, at the uh, bar when he meets Lorraine. So that's something too. But like, Mike ends up just kind of figuring it out himself. Well, Ron yeah. Livingston also does give him some he does. good stuff he does. here. He does. He does. But so it's kind of like, 
It's this is very much a dudes rock movie, which we've talked about yeah, before. I like dudes rock movie. I do. I like those types yeah. of movies. It yeah. is very much a dudes rock. I mean, there's no women really no. that no. serve no. as anything else no. to like, help Mike or no, they're just plot show that Trent is hot or doesn't like, quite pass the Bechdel. <laughs> no, <part>. not even <laughs> close. <laughs> not even close. Yeah, no, I don't think so actually. Uh, so it, it's very broy in that way. Yeah, um, but only on the surface, I think. But I don't find it to be like broy in a way that is alienating towards women. Right. I don't think I truly don't think that this is a movie that alienates half of its audience. What there. What is a movie that would do that? Uh <laughs> that's a good question. Because I was like trying to think of that too. Yeah. Because I know exactly the type of movie that you're talking about. I just couldn't think of any examples. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure like anything that was like a lower level super bad type movie are you talking about like accepted yeah like stuff like that uh, i miss find, march yeah things yeah. like that girl next door yeah right those types of movies that are like the teen even something like an american, american pie. pie yeah is a little like okay i don't really yeah eh. um and so this one though i didn't find it to be anything like that well because i think a movie like this is it's looking to say something like, those yeah. types of movies aren't looking to say anything. Like, this movie and movies, other, like, dudes rock movies, like, we've talked about Point Break. Like, these movies are saying something about either male relationships or the way that men, like, influence each other when it comes to romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're both, like, movies like that, when they're sort of, when again, it's easy to say this, but when there's a point to them. I think that they are usually really well done. Well, plus if you're going off of like specific character studies, I feel like Swingers is like a character study of Mike and of, yeah, like you said, his relationships with other men, with women, with all these different kind of factors. And it shows his flaws, not just him like, hey, he's a guy who's figuring it out and he's going right. to be with his buddy who likes saying baby and they're going to pick up <laughs> chicks right like and that's how he finds himself like that's not what the movie is no, no they make fun of themselves a lot yeah the exactly. whole movie is them making fun of the yes. archetypes that they kind of fit into exactly uh which even like one point when they're just like talking about all the places they're gonna go out he just is like we could go to the la this night at this there's like 10 different places like just they're making fun of I guess LA at the time or like somebody the people who are moving to Los Angeles to pursue a career in like acting or comedy are vain people mm -hmm. that are just like a very annoying kind of and they do a good job i think of showing how annoying these people are and it's good to make fun of yourself and re totally. be reminded of that well we talked when we were watching the movie how much we liked how lame everything was yeah so yeah it's he's so lame. revival no uh, that like, specific the all revival of it. is so lame. Yeah, yeah. The, them wearing like bowling shirts yeah, yeah. Is which was popular so, at the time and that's so popular were, yeah, at the yeah. Time. yeah it's very real well that leads me into my next question which is perfect I said, what is your 90s swing revival? So basically, like, if you were making swingers now, which it wouldn't be called swingers, right? With swing revival. Is there, like, a specific music trend or trend that's happening now that you or maybe like for example in college it would have been like an edm thing where like you would go to raves and wear like like plur right like those like friendship bracelets that you give out at festivals to uh, other people. yeah me and tom were not those people no we weren't fortunately <laughs> no is we knew them <laughs> but we weren't them is we had there, close proximity to Yeah, many extremely of close. Do you have a 90s swing revival where it's like something that is so embarrassing? Do you, Tom? What is it? Taylor Swift. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> That's so rude. I'm not myself a super Swifty here, but yes, Same. I did go to the Eras tour. Oh, you did? I did go to Eras tour. I was rolled in on my wheelchair. Okay. Because I had a mess up foot. And it was an amazing show. I gotta say, I'm kind of in. I listen to her all the time now. Her new stuff. I like her newer stuff a lot more than her older stuff. But um, honestly, like, yeah, that's that's not right. a bad idea. If I almost if, feel like the '90s are back yeah. a little bit. Things are definitely coming back around from the '90s. '90s stuff. I don't know. Boy, early 2000s boy oh, bands yeah, are back. That's oh, very yeah. cringy right now. Yeah. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, I hope NSYNC tours again." I'm like, "Yeah, oh, okay." I don't know though. <laughs> I don't right. I don't, right now in LA is but like music with no real word, like chill house music kind of okay. like like what Drake lo -fi was trying to do. Beats. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it is like jazzy a little bit. I yeah. don't know. I'm trying to think. 
my friend that is into it calls it pimp palm music. It's like pimp. I don't know. It's like very like. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that counts. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's I can't. Yeah. I what, if I play you one of the songs, it's like almost eighty it, like eighties jazz songs that are like spruced up a little bit, but not too much. Not to like an EDM level. Just maybe. Like a chill house. This vibe. sounds so chaotic. Yeah, it's it is like Drake ha- tried to do it on his album I last year. Did. Of like he kind of bit off of that, but that's okay. like what's popular in Bushwick, right? That's like what's popular in these scenes. Interesting. And almost wow. bars that do look like the night, like yeah, like look yeah. like nineties aesthetic bars. They are very popular. Like with a disco ball is popular mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, wow. I feel like Which in LA was a revival, and then Bushwick mm-hmm. was like the same energy of like, but almost the swingers aesthetic. Yeah, right. It's kind of popular. Maybe, again. oh my God, is 90s, 90s swing coming it's swing, back? Not swing, but like... The swing not revival. Far, revival. Not <laughs> the revival. The revival of the, of the revival. revival. But that is kind of a popular... I remember I was in Brooklyn recently, and I have a picture... Uh, well, yeah, these don't you live there? Two guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, at in like these sceny areas, okay. which is like almost equivalent to like Silver Lake is popular. Like, the areas okay. of like what they're trying to make fun of at the time, what that would be today. And it's two guys... With like wife beaters, with a be- like tucked in, okay, big black belt with a buckle, jeans that come up to kind of like here, yeah, dress shoes, and they're both playing pool, grease back hair, and you're <gasps> like, Unreal. what, <gasps> what, Unreal. not Hunter? Back hair. And so I forget one of the guy's name is Hunter. One <gasps> like, like these two guys, and they're like, and I was with friends that I for that I have for a long time. They're like kind of hitting on my friends, who I'm not. Like we're all just friends. I'm like, go hit on my friends. Like I'm not dating any of them. Like you don't have to come through. Be like, be my friend to whatever. Like everybody's flirting, go for it. But just like that's kind of the aesthetic that these people are trying to go. We're talking for. like greasers, kind of <laughs> greasers. Like vibe. greasers, like it's the outsider. I don't know. I like could show grease. you. I took a video. I took like a. I zoomed out and took a video <laughs> because I was like, these people are wild and I don't want to be rude. But I, I'm just gonna pretend like I'm taking a video of this place, but playing pool and then. They're playing pool, playing pool, playing pool. I'm horrible at pool. <laughs> and me and my friend, who's also not good at pool, it's the two of us playing against these two men who are there playing pool. This is like their spot. They're regulars. And they go up. like They probably get five balls in. We get like one or two. We end up winning this pool game. Oh. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. not oh, We're bad. <laughs> they are just worse. <laughs> so I'm like, what is this fantasy? It's just that for you're aesthetic just like, purposes. You're all living in this aesthetic of like a disco... I don't, so maybe eighties a little bit. I don't. I don't know what. Fifties. Yeah, I don't know what's really fifties with eighties music with this is chaotic. disco balls. It's very. It's a popular. I'm not doing the best job of describing it. But like skinny jeans is not. This is not. What I'm wearing is not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love hearing this because like as a as New Jersey suburban mom, I don't know yeah, any of you. You don't know yeah. the tra- yeah the For scenes. For me, the thing that like you can kind of pull from is cringy stuff or baby name trends right uh, now right now the biggest baby name trend for boys is listen West- we might have people that have the name their babies these because it's trendy names i'm just telling you i'm All not right. saying listen i'm just saying yeah, what yeah, they yeah. are the one that like already reached its peak and is now seen as cringy is western cowboy names okay Things what like are that Dutton uh, and like uh, levi uh, and some others I'm not going to say I know, are I know what you're names about. that um, <laughs> are like seen as like really, really popular, but now already are like, oh, no, they're lame. And then um, like gentle parenting names, which are like boy names that are kind of softer, like um, like a Luca, right? Like something oh. that's got like, I, like a Luca a, name. I, I actually like the name Luca, but um, names that are a little bit like kind of gentler. Kai. Okay. I K. AI, things like that. And then for girls, the most popular thing right now are like, like kind of like nature names like Juniper okay. and things mm. like that. And so it's so interesting to see from like a New Jersey mom perspective in the suburbs, like, oh, interesting. I'm going to have like my my son's going to have like a bunch of Duttons yeah. uh, with him in class. We're just walking in with just mud all over them. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, this is a kid from like suburban New yeah. Jersey walking in like, hey, yeah. hey, partner. S- smells horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's, yeah, maybe. That's the thing about the Old West, like, we never, because we don't live in it, we don't know what it smells <laughs> smell yeah, like. That is so true. We have this, like, oh, the great American the West. The frontier. And it's like, no, that was like manure. Yeah. <laughs> These people didn't shower for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. 
As 30-year-old men who have kind of, you grew up together in the same town in, in the middle of New Jersey, you went to the same college just a year apart, and then your lives drastically diverged. Okay. Sure. Um, I just want to know for both of you. I would say we still have a lot of similar interests. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We still relate to a lot of things. Oh, but yeah, this, yes. Our day-to-day lives are very different. Yes. Yeah. So based on those things, people, you two are very similar, similar yeah, upbringings, yeah, yeah. whatever. And then your actual experiences in your 20s and uh, later 20s and now into your 30s um, have been different from each other. I just want to know the difference in how you guys connect with the characters in Swingers. Obviously, Robbie, we see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see a lot of people that are like that. I've seen them. I see myself in them. It's just people that are pursuing a vain career yeah which is yeah that's just what it is whereas tom they're yeah, kind of the opposite <laughs> starting a family tom Beautiful. do you make any connections with these guys and swingers i do <laughs> um <laughs> uh-oh not not really because of my current life but it, re- it reminds me of college it reminds me of just hanging out with the guys like you don't think about like all your day-to-day is just i mean we were dating in college so it wasn't exactly yeah. the same but it's like all you're thinking about when you're hanging out with your friends is just like going out, doing stuff, like fighting over the video game that you're playing, like like just dumb stuff. Like it reminded me of just the banter of just hanging out with my friends every day. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Like I miss that because mm-hmm. obviously I don't get to see everybody as much anymore because not only obviously we have a kid now and all that and that's all amazing, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all the I just love it. call me money, baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I just want to play. Nice. I just want to play NHL '93 with some yeah. people sometimes. All uh, you think the only time you get to say oh, you're so money, baby, is when our kid falls asleep by seven. <laughs> yes, yes. He's so money tonight. He's so money. Oh it's also just a great. I mean, he's kind of toxically supportive and positive, but I guess you need that. I don't know, but it it is nice because it is like a frat bad I, I don't i look back on the frat and i'm like not a good vibe a lot of bad things go on in frats a lot of yeah, bad yeah, things yeah, are yeah. said not yeah. overall not great but just like well, the just idea like of a, of yeah 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 um the idea of just being really supportive because like they are really he, they are so supportive of mikey even though he's annoying even though he's intolerable i don't even think i would have the patience for mikey now well i think have to be mm-hmm. a top level friend so well yeah, I, th- yeah. that that's what i mean like s-tier friend s-tier <laughs> you, s plus tier <laughs> to deal with that for that long well i think when you caused it bro what are you doing i think it's interesting because you don't get to see the good parts of mike in this movie like because yeah. there's obviously history here for years and years and years Has you don't to be. get to see like how cool he was like what their old memories where like, you don't get to see any of that you just get this snapshot of snapshot of him like at the lowest point in his life just being absolutely miserable. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I find that to be an interesting, like, creative choice. Yeah, totally. Guess what, Tom? I think we need to move to your question so that we can get Robbie on this train with enough yeah. time. I have Ooh, one question. Uh, 16 minutes. Um, I actually have two questions. Would you like these guys in real life? Uh, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I bet them. I so, are, you like p- aspects of both of them. I see myself in both of them a little bit, but it's, like, good to be reminded how annoying uh certain behavior is i think i yeah. think i think trent would be fun if like he was like oh like your cousin's friend that you see that like a couple times you're at parties and you're like, if oh, you're at a party funny. trent's there it's yeah it's time. he's telling you some long and story I, with a good punchline right. like that's fine if, if you're director. out at a bachelor party and one of the groom's friends is trent exactly like, that's, like, that's fun. fun and then yeah mike yeah i like him he's nice i think mike would be nice if he just got out of his own way <laughs> Not that he's not nice, but I think he would be fun if he just got out of his yeah, own Yeah, yeah. I feel like Mike has been fun before. Yeah. You know? Hopefully. We're just I could see him, him not, because his cards are a little corny. He's a lot. He doesn't oh, have any jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just not. He's just like that's, a delusional that's guy. That's funny to me, There's though. so many people that are delusionally pursuing comedy. Him being a comedian thing. is amazing. Yeah. It's that, such it a great is a great concept. touch. Yeah. It's not he, like him being an actor would be a lot less funny than him yeah. being a comedian. Yeah. Um, he only owns an open mic, or he only runs an open mic. <laughs> yeah, got nothing going so on. Good. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, who's your agent?" He's like, "Oh, I don't have any West Coast representation." And how about like, East oh, Coast? How about the East Coast? And he's like, "Ah, oh. freelance, well, that's freelance. Like, I'm independent." <laughs> it's like just say you don't have a representation. <laughs> Why allow for the follow up question to exist? <laughs> so good. What are it's you so doing? good? But um, that's people because they don't. Oh, yeah. They give it to you one step at a time because they don't want to make themselves seem w- less than. But that's also L.A. is very much in the clout world. New York yes. is a little bit less of that, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But L.A. is so that. It's so funny. On that, 
So you've lived in New York for how many years now? Uh, I guess seven ish. Yeah, on and off. Because you, yeah, on and off. You, you obviously Six like living ish, in New York. Seven. Yeah, yeah, love it. Um, would you, would you ever live in L.A.? I'd like L.A. too, but I would have to be. You can't be those guys, That's right? <laughs> like, I'd rather be those guys in New York than L.A. Why what? is that? As I think it's more accessible. My friends are here. It's yeah. like easier to move around. Um, there's just more accessible for cheaper, I guess. Okay. Uh, but I like LA. I like to go out. When I first went to LA, I think I went like three times the following year. I was like, it's, it has a lot of what I do like about New York. Um, and the, indi- there is shows there. People are there. Like it, it's a good, there are good comedy shows there. There's good <laughs> improv there. There's good everything in LA and it's beautiful. It is like, the aesthetic of i guess los angeles is something that i do like so uh, how it is like, it is like chill. you could go for a beautiful hike you're by the beach like there's that kind of stuff that new york doesn't have but it's just hard to get to you need a car and you need kind of money yeah, yeah. like if yeah. you have a job out in la yeah it's and, like, a beautiful place juice. to live it's 76 and sunny every day that is nice it's yeah but don't like you have to become dream. vegan no, I mean, <laughs> like Katie. Yeah, sure. I love I love Katie. And guess what? If I I'm a vegetarian, if I went to LA, I'd be vegan. You'd be fine. You'd probably be. It's more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the food is good in LA. No, LA is great. I I would always say that if I were not to live in New York, I would probably try to live in LA. Um, but I like New York for now. Yeah. Oh, for now. Oh. Yeah. oh. Stay tuned. No, I'm just kidding. Get that get for that pilot time, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's all my questions. Great. Taglines for swingers. There's a couple, oh, I need to hear these. Ones. One of them is, of course, your money and you don't even know it. That your best. money and you don't you, even know it. Can you even beat that? Well, that's such a good thing to tell yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right? You're so Hype money and you don't up. even know it. Because like, you you're not thinking about how money you are most of the time. <laughs> but, like, you are money and you don't even know it. And so every, money, baby. That's such a good message. And it's fun to say, to call yourself baby, to call <laughs> yourself is, money. It's so good. And they just, it doesn't get old. Because he can deliver it so well, I feel like, Vince Vaughn. Money that must have been what Vince Vaughn was like, too, when he first moved oh, out. Had to, had he was a model originally, I believe. And then I think he got uh, like a commercial. So he got like $15,000 from a commercial, which was a lot of money at the time. So he was like kind of well off, I think, for a lot of his friends. Mm-hmm. And he was a glink. Look at him in that movie. He like quickly becomes less of a dreamboat, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he's good looking in the movie and yeah. he's just like must have gotten so much attention. And I do think he's on the poster for him to. Yeah. Yeah. It also got him Jurassic Park, too, which was like a big thing. Yeah. Nice. For him to have the self-awareness and really make fun of himself and just like be the goofiest version of yes. what he probably was is like makes him likable. That's probably why he's had success. I feel like and I'm in sure, the industry for so long. And I'm sure Favreau was the same way. He was, I'm pretty yes. sure this was like written off a breakup and he just turned it up to 11. Yeah. Something else that I really like about this movie that I forgot to mention is like the amount of homages and references oh, to other yes, movies. Yes. Uh, so like he, they talk about like Well, so first in in Sue's place there's a Reservoir Dogs poster on uh-huh. the wall and a uh, taxi driver poster right. on the wall. So then they talk about Reservoir Dogs in the slow motion and then it cuts to them walking in slow motion. Well, they say they're talking about Scorsese and Tarantino and they're saying like everybody steals from everybody. Right. And so, like, that's how, that's what art is. And then they steal from Reservoir Dogs immediately. Yep. It's them walking down the street in the suits. And then yep. when they are bypassing the line to get into the one club, and they go around the side, and they go back through, like, the kitchen. Like, following them from behind in the kitchen is, in like, the tracking it's, it's, it's good, fellas. fellas. It's, the, it's, like, it's the same. I love that. And then there, there's the Jaws music at one yes. point. And then they mention Boys in the Hood. So, it's, like, is it's the just... Jaws music when he's talking to the one girl yes. when he rips up the yes. tissue? Yeah, it's so good. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. I, The music I, is great, too. What I really love about it is that, like, it's this, like, kind of, like, oh, we're referencing, like, movies, whatever. Because, of course, he's this guy that wants to be in movies. Yeah. And he's a comedian. But he references the most basic movies yes. that like everyone's going to get these references yeah, yeah. like anyone who's like one of those like i watch movies taxi driver like, i love scorsese and tarantino and spielberg the well, three most popular well, well that's what they're also ever. making fun of that the and, people that move out there and that's their like yeah, that's scope their of like movie. i'm a movie it's nerd so yeah, and, this yeah. was, and this was 96 so this was like tarantino was like the biggest director in the yeah. world exactly off of pulp fiction like, it is truly genius like i <laughs> love it I it is really it. smart it is really very smart. smart. And that's one of the things that I think on the surface you think it's bro y and like sort of shallow and all, but it's really not at it's all. Really no, not. they're making fun of them. Yeah. Those yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Exactly. which is, and it they do such a good job because it's so real. Almost all the line, like a, almost like a succession. 
energy. The, the writing of, is like, so sharp. The way that they make fun of it. Also, I don't know if we talked about the scene where we didn't even talk about the uh, answering. Well, machine That's what I was gonna scene. say. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. answering machine scene is everyone's felt that on some level. That's dated. Have you done it? No. <laughs> I'm sure I've texted. You do text a lot in a you row. You like quadruple yeah. text? Like, but like in, in, no, but like in no, conversation. But usually in, a, yeah. Like if he's typing out, like. Okay, but what a, about it? Oh, I had a great time seeing you. Like, let's hurry it up. And then like, oh, like, yeah, like that oh, was also, so Oh, also, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. Did you ever done that? I don't think so. Okay. I maybe to like have. someone I was dating. That's or like different. Someone that I was maybe seen a few times. Not like I met you out and then, but who knows, maybe. <laughs> Like you get home 3 a.m. and I'm just like on the phone like, what are you at? Like, I'm sure that's happened. Actually, I'm positive. <laughs> Not like as sad of a like the his was picking sad, and yeah. calling and just like yeah. the comedic timing of when the beep happens every yeah. time. And just I was trying to time it. I think it was different every time. It was just like as the line went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just bad. cuts him off perfectly because yeah. the first few he has like a, a legit justification i yeah. guess to call back right. he gets caught right. off with the number but right. then it just goes down into the madness uh-huh. and it's just like and you're just like no he so there's a funny th- about that scene favreau wanted that scene in the way that it was and the apparently nobody else liked it oh that's they were like the movie. there should be maybe three calls or yeah. like, no, no, no no you gotta he go was like, like no there has calls. to be like eight like and he said no one on set laughed like it wasn't like a thing but to me that's like the standout scene of the entire movie i agree <laughs> It's such a good, ca- it's a, such a real feeling. And a lot of guys have that energy. I mean, yeah, women too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, if sure. it go, especially you're heartbroken or you're just like clinging to what you have. Possibility. Yeah. Or, and at the same time, Connection. you're self sabotaging. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. You know, it's course. like both ends of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good stuff. The other taglines are obviously uh, <laughs> cocktails first, questions later. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's silly. So and then the other one is. There ain't nothing wrong with letting a girl know that you're money and that you want to party. <laughs> oh, well, that's that. There is one. Uh, there is so many good lines about money and partying and girls, and I mean, they're just wild. Yes. Uh, um, I think I posted one of them that he's like, "You don't want to scare her away. You might lose a really good party, baby." Or, <laughs> You won't be money and you'll lose out on a party baby. Like they call them party babies or yeah. a cute little party baby, which is a little, I guess, misogynistic. It is. But yeah, There's other misogynistic uh, language that you yeah. call baby. A baby's light, but But just, everybody's baby. And yeah, then he's a baby at the end. Baby. He's a party baby. Everybody's yeah, a party everybody's baby. Everybody's a party baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's just very fun with the way they were they wrote it. Um yeah, two quick things at the end. So all right. I'll just do my trivia. Tom's yeah, top five trivia. trivia. Um, yeah, so the characters are based on themselves, uh, loosely based on the experiences Favreau had when he first moved to L.A. Uh, he counted on his friends Vince Vaughn and Ron Livingston to cheer him up. Um, number two, the scene in which Trent angrily yells at Sue after Sue insulted Mike was written specifically at Vaughn's request because he wanted to show that beneath Trent's bravado and swagger, he truly cared for Mike as a friend. That's nice. Which they do show. Yeah. yeah. Three. The release of the film coincided with the swing revival of the 90s, as we uh, mentioned. It increased interest in 1940s culture, Hollywood nightlife, and swing music. Some of the slang used in the film became popular, especially the use of the word money as a catch-all term of approval or quality. The exclamation Vegas baby also became a common quote when referencing the city, and it also gave exposure to the term wingman in its uh, social context. Oh, Oh, that's the first use of wingman. Or at least popular. And money. I didn't realize that that was the first place That's to really move. Like, it's very money. Number four, money. the line, you're so money, came from a Spike Lee, Michael Jordan commercial. The director kept calling the basketball player money in the Nike advertisements. Favreau saw the commercials, but the first time he ever heard someone describe something as money in real life was when Vince Vaughn said it on the set of the movie Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> Potential <laughs> investors and studios wanted to get rid of the monies, honeys, and babies. <laughs> this movie would have made zero dollars. No, if there's no honeys, monies, and babies. Yeah. A honey baby, they, a party baby. They also didn't want this cast. They were like, we want established people. We yeah, want, yeah, yeah. Like, but, but Doug Lyman was like, because he was the only person who had done anything before. He was like, no, we're, yeah. it's, well, it's these guys. That's it. And oh, then, wow. It doesn't work at no, all. No. No. Without the money's honey to babies, no. and also without those people. No. Totally. Um, and number five, Joan Favreau, John Favreau's grandmother, is the lucky gambler at the $5 minimum blackjack table. Yep. And Vernon Vaughn, Vince's dad, plays the lucky gambler at the $100 minimum oh, <laughs> blackjack cool. table. Oh, I yeah. love that. So that's cool. Um, quickly, Roger Ebert review. He gave it three stars out of four. That's which is, pretty good. He gets it. I love that's when he gets it. That's pretty good. Because this doesn't really seem like his style, but yeah. I love when he gets it. He said, the new American frontier is the all-night diner with formica, tops, and ketchup and sugar on every table and a waitress who writes down your order on a green and white guest check. 
And in these coffee shops, which reach out, or diners, which reach out like an endless progression of stops on the highway to fame, there are countless young men like the heroes of Swingers who are so near to stardom they can reach out and touch it and so far away that they can't afford to pick up the check. He ends by saying, I feel you. It's not a terribly original idea, but then as one of the guys says, everybody steals from everybody. The movie is sweet, funny, observant, and goofy with a small G. Because there's the whole joke about him being goofy. Goofy, yeah. And he's like, well, at least it's Disney. And then he doesn't get the job. So good. Uh, Which means you you don't get paid, but at least you don't have to wear the suit. Nice. (laughs) Oh, that is a good review. Yeah. But that's also a funny, because those are jobs that people get excited about. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. play goofy in the theme park when, like... And you'll brag about it. As you can see, these people are willing to brag about literally the lowest level thing that they have going on. It's very funny, very real. And it's still, I think the sentiment of people that are in that role is very similar to today. For sure. Um, And they're intolerable. (laughs) (laughs) And I get it. Sometimes you have to self-correct. You got to watch Swingers and be like, this is what we don't want to be. Yes. Also, everyone watch Swingers if you haven't. I don't know why you It's so good. It's the best. It is very good. Okay. So, does Swingers make Baby's First Watch List? Yeah. yeah. It actually was surprisingly more appropriate than I thought it was going to be. There's cursing, but that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 No, it's not so, really that. Probably more appropriate than The Shining, to be honest. I think oh, so. definitely. <laughs> definitely, I would say. Um, no, it's funny. Yeah. You got to remind yourself. Do you want to... Don't be either of them, I guess. No. <laughs> Fully. No. Definitely but don't be Sue. Definitely don't be Sue. <laughs> no, Sue's off the table. <laughs> Sue's wild. But I do feel like I live in between Mikey and Trent. <laughs> That's not a bad place to be. Yeah. In between. No, no, no. That's yeah. not bad. Uh, do you have any takeaways? Um, yeah. That sometimes beneath the surface of like uh, the dumb stuff that groups of friends do is is true caring. And that's what you need to find. You know, mine is. What? <laughs> Your money. And you don't even You're know. So it, money, baby. Baby, and you don't <laughs> You're even so know money, baby. You're so money. He definitely knows it. Our baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he Our knows baby it. knows it. Yeah. Your baby knows he's money. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He knows he's money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good to remind him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's I so mean, money. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was Swingers. Um, we're recording this in like a in like a vacuum, so I have no idea what's next. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned for whatever's next. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to Swingers. Um, listen to Robbie's podcast, A Lot About Nothing, everywhere you get your podcasts. It is hilarious. It's Aaron's favorite podcast. It is. I- Go watch their clips and all that. There's plenty of reels and everything. God knows what you'll be doing by the time this comes out. Probably even more stuff. So, yeah, check them out. Um, And thank you again for coming on, Robbie. Oh, thank you. He'll I'll be, be back, back on at least for Toy Story 3 at, at some least. point. Okay, bye, uh, baby. See you later. Bye. <laughs>